Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Sneha Nara and today we'll be starting with semester 5 physical chemistry paper number 303, unit 3 part A which is chemical kinetics. So in the previous lectures we have already started about the two important theories of chemical kinetics which were the primary and the secondary salt effect. Now in this coming video we'll be starting about the kinetics of heterogeneous reactions. Now as the name only suggests heterogeneous means wherein the reactants or the products can be in different states. The states of the reactants and products can be either one in solid and the other one in the gaseous state. So in the entire topic, we'll be studying two different phases of the reactants and products and then it will be considered as a kinetics of heterogeneous reaction. This equation is also called as the Langmuir adsorption isotherm. Now, to understand this theory, we will have to understand what exactly the process occurs, how exactly the process is taking place. So if I say we have a solid surface and there will be gas molecules which will be getting adsorbed on the surface of solid. Now there are two different ways. One is called as the adsorption and the other one is called as the absorption. Now the basic difference between absorption and adsorption is that adsorption will only be a surface phenomena while on the contrary absorption will be the phenomena which will take place in the entire surface as well as in the bulk of that uh, surface area. So we have a solid surface. The gas molecules are getting adsorbed on the surface of solids. Now we already know that the gas molecules will be adsorbed only in the unimolecular layer. Means no other gas molecule can be adsorbed again on the top of these gas molecules which have already been adsorbed on the surface of solid. So there will be A, a unimolecular layer that will be formed and then two simultaneous process will be taking place. The very first process that is taking place is called as a condensation reaction wherein the gas molecule will try and get condensed on the surface of the solid surface. The second phenomena will be the evaporation process wherein the gas molecule which is already present on the solid surface will try to get evaporated back into the surface of back into the gaseous phase. So because the two simultaneous process are occurring condensation and evaporation so we can derive two basic formula that one, the total surface covered by the gas molecule can be given by a mathematical term theta and the total uncovered or the bare part which wherein further gas molecules can be covered or can be adsorbed will be considered as one minus theta. Now if I talk about one minus theta and theta, so what will happen is all the, if theta is a fraction of the total surface that is covered by the adsorbed molecule, then we can say 1 minus theta will be the uncovered part or which will be the bare part. So the rate of adsorption can be given by Kp into 1 minus theta, wherein K is nothing but the proportionality constant. P is the pressure and 1 minus theta, why we have taken 1 minus theta here? Because adsorption can take place only at the places wherein the gas is not present. So what will happen is the adsorption will take place only at the bare part and hence instead of theta, we have taken 1 minus theta in this particular equation. Now, if I want to understand the rate of evaporation of the gas molecule, the rate of evaporation of gas molecule will be equal to K dash theta. K dash is nothing but again the proportionality constant itself. Theta y, theta here we have taken because for evaporation, theta is all the covered part of the gas. So, uh, the gas can get evaporated obviously from the place wherein it is already present. So, theta will be considered for the rate of evaporation. Now, there will come a time which is at the equilibrium, both the stages will be equal. The rate of evaporation will be exactly equal to the rate of condensation. So what will happen is Kp1 minus theta is equal to K dash theta. If I solve this equation, Kp minus Kp theta is equal to K dash theta. If I take all the theta terms on one side, so this equation will turn out to be theta is equal to Kp upon Kp plus K dash. We have just solved the equation. We have just rearranged the equation and solved the K theta value. Now, if we say that if I want to adsorb the gas, so a, adsorption A is equal to K double dash theta. Now, K dash K and K double dash are nothing but the proportionality constant. For the simplicity purpose, we need to bifurcate proportionality constant in different factors. So we have taken as K dash, K double dash and K dash. So if I want to now find out the rate of reaction, so rate of reaction would be what? Dx upon dt is equal to A. We are just placing uh, K double dash theta. So we are just placing what? theta value in this particular equation. So Kp upon Kp plus K dash, which is the theta value into K double dash. 
So if I take all the k and k double dash terms on one side of the equation, so it will turn out to be what k into k double dash upon k p plus k dash into p. Now, if I divide the equation by k dash, why k dash? Because k dash is the only vary only uh, part of the equation which does not have any variable attached to it. So this has got pressure term attached. The numerator has got the pressure term attached. Only the k dash term is one such term which does not have any variable attached pressure term attached to it. So what we can do is, according to the mathematical law, we already know that we can divide it by k dash because it does not have any variable attached. So k dash k into k double dash upon k dash into pressure upon k upon k dash into pressure plus one will be the equation why because k dash upon k dash will be equal to exactly equal to what one. So this equation will be what minus dx upon dt will be equal to k1 into p upon k2 p plus one. Now why k1? See this equation k k dash upon k dash uh, is taken as kp k1 and the k upon k dash is taken as k2. So we have just placed a value because we are not concerned with the proportionality terms. So so to simplify this equation, we have uh, given the rate of equation dx upon dt is equal to k1 into p upon k2 into p plus one. Now, this is also called as a Langmuir adsorption isotherm, as we have discussed earlier. Two cases can occur. One, wherein the gas is slightly adsorbed. So, when it is very slightly adsorbed, so what will happen is, we can automatically neglect and the equation will turn out to be what? Only K1P. So, this is called as a first order reaction. And if the, if the gas is very highly at, you know, at sufficiently very high pressure, it is got completely adsorbed, then what will happen is, dx upon dt, uh, we can completely neglect the pressure term. Why? Because it is very high pressure we are talking about. So this equation will turn out to be dx upon dt is equal to k1 upon k2, which is even equal to constant. So the pressure term we have neglected. And so dx upon dt will be equal to what? Kp into kp raised to n. Wherein n in low pressure situation or the slightly absorbed situation will be first order. And in the high pressure situations, it will be zero order. So this was called as a kinetics of heterogeneous reaction or the Langmuir adsorption isotherm, which forms a very important question according to the Gujarat University syllabus. In the coming video, we'll be studying about the retardation reactions. Thank you.